Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with celery sorbet. That's right, we're going to make a frozen dessert with a vegetable. And not even a good vegetable. We're going to use celery. I mean, when was the last time you heard someone say, man, I could really go for some celery? So yes, this might seem like a really bad idea, but it would probably only take you one spoon of this stuff to realize it's not a bad idea. And I'm not crazy. It's actually incredibly delicious. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And first up, we have to make what's called a simple syrup. And we'll make that by adding equal parts sugar and water to the saucepan. And we'll set that over medium heat and give it a stir. Although I'm pretty sure you don't have to stir it. This would work exactly the same. But I always sort of feel like I should be doing something while I'm talking. Plus, stirring feels good. And then what we'll do once we see that just start to boil is immediately turn off the heat. All right, we don't need to cook this and we're definitely not trying to reduce it. So as soon as that starts to simmer, we'll go ahead and turn it off. And then what we'll need to do is let this cool all the way down to room temp before we use it. Which is good because that's going to give us time to prep our celery. So while our simple syrup is cooling down, we will wash and slice up one pound of celery. And even though we are going to puree this in the blender, it's always helpful to start with nice small pieces. And then besides the celery, we'll also do a pinch of salt, as well as we'll squeeze in the juice of one lime. And by the way, yes, lemon would also work here. So feel free to use that instead if you want. All right, you are after all the Christian Grey of your celery sorbet. And a little bit of experimentation is always encouraged. So we will squeeze in some lime and or lemon. And then last but not least, we will add our simple syrup. Assuming, of course, it's completely cooled. Oh, and by the way, do not wash the pan you made the syrup in. We're going to use that in a minute. And then what we'll need to do is blend this until it's utterly and completely smooth. And then even though we're pretty much liquefying this, once that's done, we're still going to want to strain it through a fine sieve. And we can do that right into that same pan we made our syrup in. And by pressing that through a fine mesh strainer using the back of a spoon or a spatula, we're going to trap any and all those relatively tough fibers while squeezing and pressing all that good stuff through. And we're going to want to do that until one of two things happens. Either we keep pressing until absolutely no more liquid's coming through, or we lose patience and stop. And usually that second thing happens first. But try to stay with this as long as you can stand it, pressing out as much of that precious juice as possible. And once that's been accomplished, that is pretty much it for our celery sorbet base. But before we can use it, like all sorbet and ice cream bases, we have to chill this thoroughly before it's processed. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on and pop that in the fridge for a couple hours. At which point, after being thoroughly chilled, we can go ahead and add that to whatever ice cream machine we're using. And personally, this is my favorite style of ice cream maker, where you keep that bowl inside in the freezer until you're ready to use it. And then what happens is that turns around, our mixture sort of freezes to the surface, and as it does, it's continually scraped off by that blade, which is called a dasher, and eventually the temperature drops, and this goes from a liquid to sort of a slush, to sort of a really thick slush, to sort of a really, really thick slush. And after about 20 minutes, mine looked like this. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have an ice cream machine, you can still totally make this. And I will explain how in the blog post. But anyway, once that's churned long enough, we'll go ahead and turn it off and quickly scrape off that dasher. And yes, if you wanted it nice and soft and slushy, you could go ahead and eat it now. But like me, you're probably making this ahead, which in that case, you'll go ahead and transfer that into some kind of airtight container or just cover it with some plastic and a plate. I'm not sure if this came with the top, but if it did, I lost it. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap that up and pop it in the freezer until I'm ready to serve, which for the sake of the video is now. And I'll go ahead and scoop some into this fancy sorbet glass. And I should mention if you've had this in the freezer and it's super hard, let it warm up a little bit. Okay, we don't want it melting, but we do want that texture to soften up a little bit. And then I finish by garnishing with a little celery leaf, which not only do I think looks nice, but it also sort of alerts our guests what they're getting into. And that's it, our celery sorbet is done and ready to enjoy. And also probably totally confuse our friends and family. But you know what, you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. All right, I feel like we built up a good rapport and hopefully you realize I'm not gonna recommend something like this if it wasn't absolutely fantastic. I mean, yes, it does still taste a little bit like celery, but the sweetness and little bit of acidity perfectly balances the bitterness, creating something truly surprising and unique. Whoops, that's okay. Placemat sorbet is the best sorbet. Anyway, the point I'm making is this is like a thousand times better than you'd think it would be. And not only is this good served plain as is, but you can also use it for crazy other delicious things, like a buffalo hot wing sundae, 
where we grate some frozen blue cheese on this and a little bit of hot sauce. Or you should try this stuff with candied pastrami sprinkles, which I haven't invented yet, but I will. So there are just so many interesting creative things we could do with this. But anyway, that's it, celery sorbet. You remember that time you said you'd try anything once? Assuming you were talking about food, I really do hope you keep that promise and give this highly unusual, but incredibly delicious sorbet a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.